What is going on guys, Bangalore here coming back at you with another video back, finally, I guess, on Madden NFL 18 franchise. Today we're doing a rebuild of the New York Jets, and remember, these really aren't supposed to be realistic, that is a completely different series on the channel. Uh, there's a playlist for that on my channel if you'd like to check that out, and be sure to tell me uh, who I should do next for that, as well as, I guess, these fantasy style rebuilds where anything goes. We can trade for anyone, sign anyone, draft anyone, etc. We can do literally whatever we want to get this team to the Super Bowl. And this team, um, gonna be honest, it's not good. We're obviously doing the New York Jets, and uh, I guess Josh McCown's our starting quarterback. We have Matt Forte, who's obviously past his prime, Bilal Powell. Um, I, get, I mean, this receiving core is terrible. Like, our Darius Stewart is, I think, the best player on this uh, on this offense for the receiving core, at least. Because ASJ had so much potential, it didn't really work out for him. Um, this is Chad Hansen. More like uh, Chris Hansen. Someone call uh, to catch a predator. Honestly, he looks like one. He's, he's scary. We also have, what is that, Ryan Anderson. My connection's really bad since I am back at school. So uh, it's taken forever to load up. Robbie Anderson, I have no idea who this is. It's like the one player in the entire NFL I don't know. And I know Brandon Shell, I know Brian Winters, you know, who else? Ben Ijalana, however you say that last name. Um, I know I know everyone in the NFL pretty much, but I have no idea who Robbie Anderson is. We got Rontez Miles, Sheldon Richardson playing linebacker for whatever reason, which I still don't agree with. This is a 3-4 defense. That's set up in a 4-3 for whatever reason. It did that last time. I did the Texans. I didn't know it did. So, like, Mo Wilkerson and Leonard uh, Williams should never be 4-3 defensive ends with Sheldon Richardson in coverage as a 4-3 outside linebacker. It just makes no sense. We do have Jamal Adams, though. First-round pick out of uh, LSU, of course. We also have Marcus May, who we're going to start uh, at strong safety. We're going to play Jamal Adams over at free safety. But I guess... Uh, might as well get into some of these trades here, try to improve this team. Right off the bat, what I'm trying to do more than likely is address, I want to say linebacker, cornerback, and then really any offensive position because I'm trying to get rid of Matt Forte. I don't know if I'm going to draft a quarterback or what, but a lot of these guys have to go, and we need to get some talent back on this team any way that we can. So let's go ahead and get into some trades also, it is of note that this is the first time I've checked out the free agency, I guess, ever in Madden 18. And we have some decent options here. We're going to go ahead and sign Ladarius Green, former uh, San Diego Charger, as well as Pittsburgh Steeler. I guess I wasn't even aware that he was cut, but he's still a pretty high overall. So we're going to slide him in a tight end right there. And he probably could be our tight end of the future. He's only like 28, 27. Yeah. So he is young. He's going to play that tight end position. But now let's actually make some trades. <laughs> it's just so funny to me how uh, broken trading can be in this game when I can trade for a top two running back in the NFL with Buster Screen, Steve McClendon, and the third round pick. We got David Johnson regardless. Um, I think if Madden were to improve something with their trading system, I think it's adding more value to certain positions because there's no reason that halfback should be, you know, a value so much lower than a bunch of these other positions same thing with like certain players on the offensive line with defensive tackle i mean there are numerous positions and like that trade should really never go through but who who am i to uh to get in the way i'm i'm trading for david johnson it's kind of whatever i mean we need all the help we can get at this point i also i made some position changes last time i did that some people didn't know what was going on because they're stupid and they yelled at me said i was cheating it's whatever though. Um, we changed obviously to a 3-4. And then defensively, we're starting Lorenzo Malden now, who should have been starting the entire time. We moved Leonard Williams actually to nose tackle, which is kind of an interesting move in a 3-4. I think he's gonna do tremendously well there. I kinda still wanna get rid of Mo Wilkerson. Sheldon Richardson sliding down to play 3-4 defensive end, which I think is his best natural position. And then, I mean, the linebacker core is is somewhat poor. It leaves a lot to be desired. This whole defense, and honestly, this whole offense does, aside from David Johnson now. But let's go ahead and trade Matt Forte, maybe trade ASJ, Kelvin Beecham, maybe some trash offensive lineman. Brian Winters is not amazing. 
I don't know. We need to make this team better. I think I kind of want to work with picks because there isn't really much trade value on this team, unfortunately. With this trade, I am trading Matt Forte, Robbie Anderson, and a second round pick for John Brown and a first round pick from the Cardinals. They obviously had a need for running back after we acquired David Johnson. And I still probably want to move with Bilal Powell, but I think the offense has improved quite a bit. Nothing so far defensively other than position changes and things like that, but I think we're we're moving in the right direction overall. With this trade, I am trading Kelvin Beecham, Morris Claiborne, and a sixth round pick next year for a first round pick from the San Francisco 49ers. I really don't have any need um, for Kelvin Beecham or Morris Claiborne. I know the Jets just signed Mo Claiborne, but he's a 78 overall. He's already into his late 20s. I just don't see him being a great long-term option for us, especially since we're trying to build this uh, Jets team into a super team. So I feel like we needed to make that trade. Also, injuries are always off, so we get Quincy and Nunoa back in the starting lineup, which is very, very good, even though I mean, this first season is not going to be anything special in the fact that uh, it's not going to get a whole lot of wins. could be special, like, one win, maybe. <laughs> be special how terrible it is i don't really know though i still want to trade muhammad wilkerson it's just i don't know like i don't know how he has 69 blocks yet like he used to be so dominant but uh i still might try to move him i think i'm pretty much done trading though i'll see if there are any good good things i can get for him but we're probably just going to be done fun fact just spent about 20 minutes in the bathroom something like that because uh my videos are actually so shitty that every time I get down to record, uh, it forces me to have explosive diarrhea. But um, let's get back into it. That's pretty gross. <laughs> I just traded Dion Simon in a fifth this year as well as a third next year uh, for Gary and Conley from the Raiders who have no value on him for whatever reason, even though he's a first round pick. Terrific young player, only 22 years old out of Ohio State, and he is now on the New York Jets. I think... I want to make another move with the Raiders, and it involves getting rid of Muhammad Wilkerson. Just not sure who I want exactly yet. I know what you guys are thinking. I obviously want Khalil Mack, but not for this team. I think I'm going to go a different direction. Uh, and with this trade, I got the best that I could for Mo Wilkerson. I just don't see him in the long-term future of the Jets here uh, in this particular fantasy-style rebuild. So Muhammad Wilkerson, a fifth-round pick and a sixth-round pick for a second round pick from the Chicago Bears. And I think that's all the moves that I'm gonna make. I was really close to getting Amari Cooper. Couldn't get it done. Wasn't willing to give up a first round pick in order to do so. So we have three or four first round picks overall, second round pick. We should be good. We're pretty much just gonna try and build through the draft, get a quarterback, and hopefully the rest will take care of itself. But a decent team overall uh, for where the Jets were at the start of this, I think. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark and see how we're doing. So at the midseason mark, we are two and six. Not exactly having a killer season here. Patriots are four and four, so you know Madden simulation is a one. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. Not much else to say. Kind of a, a little bit better than I thought we'd be doing, to be honest. Sheldon Richardson was a free agent that I could tell. So was John Brown, Quincy Inunua. Demario Davis. I'm going to try to bring back all of those guys. The rest, though, really don't have a ton of interest in ASJ, uh, Dakota Dozier, Bruce Carter, not really. So let's go ahead and try to get these top four guys back, and maybe not even Demario Davis. I'm not really sure. This 64 block shed? Jeez, that is terrible. We have 104 million in cap room, and we don't really even have that much to bring back. That is wild. If there's any superstars in free agency, I mean, you can bet that we are going after them with everything that we have. This is a ton of cap room. I think the most I've ever seen uh, in Madden 18 thus far. Uh, the Browns, I don't even think we had this much with Cleveland. I really don't. All right, so we brought back DeMario Davis. It wasn't really too expensive, so I was kind of fine to do it. We also brought back Quincy Nunwa, John Brown, and Sheldon Richardson. So all pretty good deals. Happy with them. And I'm going to use some of this Coach XP and then see you guys for the playoffs, which we probably won't make, if we're being honest. Not even probably, like, there's not even a chance. I don't even know what I'm talking about. All right, so clearly, we did not make the playoffs as we signed a bunch of practice squad players. Six and 10 is better than I wanted to do. I wanted a higher draft pick. I don't know how this team won six games. Josh McCown is just too much of a beast, I guess. Decent amount of XP for some of our players, though. 
around 10k for a few of them defensively i was hoping gary and conley would kill it jamal adams has a ton though let's go ahead and check out the stats and see what propelled us to this monstrously good season and of course it is josh mccown killer season only averaged more than an interception per game love it rushing david johnson did very well 1100 yards nine touchdowns receiving john brown almost had a thousand yards six touchdowns six touchdowns for quincy anunua five for both ladarius green and our darius stewart blocking i don't really care you know if they were awful the tackles were at least defensively the Mario Davis led our team in tackles with 123. Tackles for a loss would be 16 from Sheldon Richardson, 12 from Leonard Williams. Quarterback sacks would be 8 from Jordan Jenkins. Interesting. 5.5 for Sheldon Richardson, 3 for Leonard Williams. Didn't really expect too many out of him. Interceptions-wise, 2 for Marcus May and Marcus Williams, who I thought I traded. I guess I didn't. Force fumbles, 1 for a handful of players. Same thing with fumble recoveries. Any defensive touchdowns? No, I guess let's move on to awards real quick. MVP is Tom Brady. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year is also Tom Brady. No Jets in there. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier. No Jets. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Deshaun Watson of the 8-8 eight eight Houston Texans. Uh, we get a Jet in there, our Darius Stewart. Any Defensive Rookie of the Year candidates? Marcus May at a number 5, Jamal Adams at number 8, and Gary Conley at number 9. Marcus May finished first before, well, not first, but before Jamal Adams. That's quite interesting to me. Obviously, Jamal Adams with that superstar development, which I guess isn't obvious, but that's why he got a ton of XP. Let's go ahead and simulate to the off season and uh, and really get into this. That's right. We had to bring back Ladarius Green as well. Dan Williams. Did the CPU sign Dan Williams? I'm not even mad. 69 block shed dude what is up with low block shed for a lot of these players that i feel like should have way higher block shed 69 for both mo wilkerson and dan williams uh i don't really want dan williams though so i will pass i do want ladarius green though like, really badly so we're gonna bring him back and we do so drew Brees is a free agent this is quite interesting because obviously we don't necessarily have a bona fide quarterback but i'm not gonna draft the quarterback and then not start him and start Drew Brees, who's 39 over him, who obviously is not the future of this team, when he could retire really at any moment. So as much as I love Drew Brees, can't bring him back. I, I really want to, or not bring him back, but I can't bring him to New York. Um, get a phone call. I'll answer it. I'm not clearly not busy. Shout out to Frank for the call, but we're back. Allen Robinson is the move. I need Allen Robinson on the team. And I feel like then the receiving core would be set because we have John Brown in the slot, Quincy Anun one, Allen Robinson out, lot, or out wide. I think that's killer. Also, I really want Jeremiah Tachu. Shout out to Georgia Tech. He's a beast. Does he go by Jerry now? I feel like he does. I guess he went back. Um, I really want him. He's sick. Fits to what we, I want to do here. Will we play him over Lorenzo Malden? It's possible. We could also move him to the left side. I don't really know what I want to do. Uh, I feel like he played left side at Georgia Tech. He was a player that I really, really liked coming out of college, ability-wise. I think he was in that same draft class with uh, Khalil Mack, Demarcus Lawrence, and I guess Jeremiah Tasha were like the top three pass rushers who were kind of unknown going into the draft. I know Khalil Mack was eventually a top five pick, but he wasn't always like in that upper echelon when I was uh, when I was watching him at Buffalo. And of course, Jeremiah Tasha at Georgia Tech is not a huge school for football, or it wasn't at the time really. It's definitely better now and then. Demarcus Lawrence at Boise State. Uh, but I definitely want Jeremiah Tachu. I am going to sign him to a max deal, not max deal, but it's going to be it's going to be pretty big. I really, really want him on the team, and we're going to have to increase that offer. So we got Jeremiah Tachu. I don't see, I don't see my man A. Rob here. Where's A. R. Fifteen? Where is he? Damn, I didn't even know that was a thing. The Cardinals just swooped in out of nowhere. And I gotta up this deal. I was trying to offer him bank. He's gonna get 10 mil per year. Let's give him a $4 million signing bonus as well. 103 points to make sure that I get him uh, with no more surprises. But I'm gonna scout. We're gonna get A-Rob on the team. And uh, I guess I'll probably see you guys for the draft. So here we are in the draft and I'm in kind of a tricky situation. I am taking this number one overall pick but I also 
want the number two overall pick. I also want another top five pick. And I currently have the first, fifth, and twelfth in the first round, and then I don't pick again until uh, the second round. And I need to figure out how to parlay these picks in a, like, top five picks. I need to get higher up in the draft somehow. And if I trade down, I can do that. But I don't want the Dolphins to take the player I'm interested in. It is a quarterback. He looks insane. There are other good quarterbacks in this draft, but I think this one is probably the best. So it's do I trade down with the Dolphins and hope they don't take a quarterback and stick with either Ryan Tannehill or Jay Cutler, which isn't a great option, but they could stick potentially with Ryan Tannehill. Or do I take the quarterback, don't take the chance, and then try to get the second overall pick? I think I'm going to take the first overall pick. But before I do that, I'm going to trade into the top five again and try to get the Dolphins pick. And then try to get the... I don't, I don't even know. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I know I just re-signed to Mario Davis, but I'm doing this trade. It's the 12th overall pick, a second round pick, and Demario Davis for the number two overall pick. And so far I have the first, second, and fifth, and I still want to get higher than number five overall. I just don't want to take the chance that these players I'm interested in get taken. And then I need to somehow get back into the first round. I mean, I got a lot of work to do, but let's go ahead and take these first two picks. I'm really, really confident, and they're kind of interesting. With this pick, I am taking Anthony Otis out of Ohio State. A-plus throw power, A-minus throw accuracy short, B-throw accuracy mid. He's very, very talented. The other quarterback I was looking at was Mike Zimmerman, who is really good. He is. Strong arm out of LSU, A-plus throw power, uh, B-throw accuracies for short and mid. Decent combine as well. I just don't trust that as much as I trust Anthony Otis. So he is my first overall selection. Welcome to the team. 86 overall, superstar development, number one in the entire draft. He is insane. 75 awareness is pretty high to start out as well. 82 deep accuracy, 84 mid, 90 short. He's got 96 throw power, 83 throw on the run, 75 play action, and 77 speed. He is Aaron Rodgers, basically, um, coming out of the draft. 86 overall. That's why we didn't sign Drew Brees. And I, this next pick is going to be a little bit interesting as well because we just went out and signed Allen Robinson, but I'm drafting a wide receiver in Takoy Dockery out of USC. He is insane. Not the fastest option, but he is unbelievable in terms of top three skills. Great combine as well. You know, can jump out of the building, out of the stadium. 20-yard shuttle, so he's pretty agile. Good three-cone as well. He's got the acceleration. He's strong. He's amazing. Takoy Dockery out of USC. Welcome to the team. Okay, so he's a 78 overall, and he does have superstar development. So it says I reached. I'm comfortable with the selection. He's still pretty fast, incredibly tall, amazing catching stats, and it's just we got to boost awareness. That's all it is. Once we boost awareness, we're golden and re release too. But, I mean, he's kind of insane. Look at that agility. Look at the ball carrier vision. Like, why do you even have that stat so high? But I need to get this third overall pick, I think. That is, that's next on the board. I need it. I need it. Oh my god, that just go through? Bryce Petty, a fourth and a second next year for the number three overall pick from the Bears. I don't know how that worked. I really don't. I thought I was going to give it, uh, have to give it my fifth overall pick. This worked out so well just now. I'm taking <laughs> DeAndre Corner out of Oklahoma. 3-4 run stopper. He is another player that's just absolutely insane. A minus hit power, B plus tackle, B plus power move. Perfect for my 3-4. He's super strong, fast as well. He is everything I'm looking for. DeAndre Corner, 80 overall. He's currently ranked 17th in the draft. I'm very happy I got him though. 86 for strength, tackle, power move. He's got 79 for block shedding, speed, acceleration. Like that's a force to be reckoned with on the inside. He's going to be insane. And now I have the fifth overall pick, and I'm going to use that to trade down, I think, later in the first round, and then pick up a cornerback in Keenan Lucas. So I can afford to trade down, like, to number 10, probably, with Jacksonville. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm trying to trade a receiver right now, and it's going to be our Darius Stewart, more than likely. I do kind of want to keep Quincy Anuma on the team, and so I'm going to try and upgrade uh, our Darius Stewart get his overall up, give him some more trade value, and hopefully I can move him to Jacksonville. 
All right, this was the best trade that I could do. I'm holding on to Quincy and Nuno for right now. They didn't have enough interest in him. It was only yellow, which meant I couldn't really get as much as I wanted. But I'm moving down five spots, so we're just pretty much swapping those picks. And then I'm picking up a second round pick in exchange for a fifth and a seventh aside from the swap. Uh, and that is all next year's action. So let's go ahead and simulate to pick number 10 in the first round. And I know a lot of first round picks in this particular um, fantasy rebuild thus far. But we're going to go ahead and draft Keenan Lucas. We're not going to let him slip. Amazing height, speed. Like he had a sick combine. I know it doesn't necessarily look like that because there's nothing green on there. He had a sick combine. His top three skills are awesome. Keenan Lucas, 81 overall, quick development. We drafted him at number 10. He was ranked number 5 in the draft. 95 speed, 81 man, 80 zone. Play rec is pretty high, actually, at a 72 coming out of the draft. 94 excel, 89 agility, 87 press. He is very, very good. Got to boost that awareness, though. And this draft was an overwhelming success. I do have a seventh round pick, and I intend on drafting a player with that if he's still on the board. So let's go ahead and simulate there. And got to love this connection. All right, he's on the board. Bennett Lester out of the Ohio State University. B man, C plus zone, C plus press. Good top three skills. I think a very good value player for the seventh round. We draft him 70 overall, excellent pick. He's ranked number 153. We took him at two, oh, 197, okay. Um, I just saw his stats and he's actually amazing. 90 speed, 85 man, 79 zone, uh, 78 press, 89 excel, 83 agility. It's just 51 play rec is awful. And then awareness is 57. But like, that's what I love to see because he's an incredible player. And we, all we have to do is boost awareness of play rec, and he's going to be a really high overall. So he's going to play nickel cornerback for me. And the tag team of Gary and Conley and Keenan Lucas is going to be so awesome. And then we have Bennett Lester as that nickel slot corner. So, I mean, we're in business. This team has taken major, major strides here in the first offseason. So, of course, quick draft recap for you guys. I don't usually show this. I don't even know why I am. But Anthony Otis, incredible. Sequoia Dockery, very, very good as well. Superstar development on him. I want to show it. I don't know if I can press A right now. I'm pretty sure I can. It's just super slow. There it goes. Uh, we also have DeAndre Corner, 80 overall. I think he had quick, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember, though. Uh, he had normal. That's unfortunate. Keenan Lucas out of Texas A&M, 81 overall. Another great selection. 95 speed on him. He had quick. And then Bennett Lester, very, very good uh, in the seventh round. Like, he can come in and play right away, even though he's only a 70 overall. Like, he's insane, kind of. So let's simulate to the next week, kind of rearrange this team a bit and see where we are. All right, this is the team for season number two. Looking pretty good. Changed it in my depth chart so I don't have to deal with uh, guys like Takoy Dockery not playing at all. Wanted John Brown in the slot. So we have a uh, quarterback here, Anthony Otis, Get some sick targets for him to throw to. Decent offensive line, not amazing, obviously. Big hole here at left guard in Ben Braden. But defensively, it's looking okay aside from the linebacking core, which can be improved over time. Really like the cornerbacks. Defensive line is solid. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. And uh, hopefully, under uh, new leadership in Anthony Otis, we're doing very, very well. Okay, uh, one in six at the midseason mark is not exactly where I thought we would be. My quarterback has zero XP. Why do you have zero XP? Oh, there it goes, 15,000. Okay, that's a little bit better. We're going to use some of that, and hopefully um, he'll start playing a bit better. I don't even know if he's playing poorly, but we're one in six. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that could be. I don't know why J James Carpenter is not playing. Like, what is going on? I can't even do anything with my controller right now. <sighs> Just know that I'm going to re-sign David Johnson and whoever else is a free agent I want to bring back. And you guys will see when that happens. But, like, I got to restart the game. Cool. So I brought back everyone that I wanted to, which was just four players. It was James Carpenter. It was Leonard Williams. It was David Johnson. And it was... Uh, I don't know. Totally forgot. I literally have no idea. I... Who was it? And, like, why is James Carpenter not in the starting lineup? Like, whose idea was that? He's gonna play left guard, I guess. Can I not move him? 
Jesus, dude. This connection is so bad. I'm going to go to do it in the depth chart. This basically is what the Jets quarterback situation was there for a second. Literally nothing. We obviously have Anthony Otis now, who's a bit better. James Carpenter, you play left tackle now. I don't know what to tell you. It's just what happens. It's what you do. Todd Flanagan, do you start at center? You do, okay. Well, it is what it is. I got to address offensive line in the offseason. That's for sure. It's probably a big problem and a big reason why we're 1-6, and six, but... Season three will be different. So obviously, did we not? Or ooh, words. Obviously, we did not make the playoffs. Went four and twelve, which was somehow worse than last year, despite having a far superior team, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and check out the stats and see how this disaster happened. Anthony Otis, forty-five hundred yards. I saw. What else? Show me something. Forty-five hundred yards, thirty-six touchdowns, seventeen picks. Not terrible for a rookie season. I'm okay with that. Rushing David Johnson did David Johnson things other than not having a ton of touchdowns and six fumbles. Don't know what's going on with that. Takoy Dockery straight up killed the game in terms of catches. Not a whole ton of touchdowns for him. Decent amount of yards. Two receivers over 1,000 yards, and one of them's a tight end who hit exactly 1,000 yards. Uh, Ladarius Green also had nine touchdowns. A Rob, AR 15, 1,100 yards on 81 catches, eight touchdowns. John Brown did pretty well in the slot. Blocking-wise, this is going to be disgusting. Um, it really isn't, but it, it looks pretty... Like, they're terrible. I need change. In terms of tackles for loss, Darren Lee had the most tackles on our team, by the way. Tackles for loss, 15 from Sheldon. We also have 13 from DeAndre Corner, 10 from Leonard Williams. Quarterback sacks would be 6.5 from Sheldon, 6.5 for DeAndre Corner, 5 for Jeremiah Tasha. We're not getting a ton of pass rush. Interceptions, oh my god. That is so bad. Two for both rookie cornerbacks, and then two from the rest of the team. Four total interceptions. That is horrific. Forced fumbles. We have kind of a lot. Fumble recoveries, a decent bit as well. Defensive touchdowns, nobody. I'm hoping on two awards here. Defensive Rookie of the Year and Offensive Rookie of the Year. Who gets it? Doesn't matter to me. Aaron Rodgers gets MVP. Doubt we're going to see any Jets in there. And we did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mike Zimmerman, the rookie. Are you kidding me? Whatever. AFC Office Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Anthony Otis is in there at number nine for Offensive Player of the Year for the AFC. I like that. Defensive Player of the Year. No Jets in there, but it went to Preston Brown. Okay. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Anthony Otis. That's what I like to see. Decoy Dockery. I would have actually probably preferred him to win it. He's up there as well, though. Show me Defensive Rookie of the Year. No. Second and third. Keenan Lucas and DeAndre Corner. We also get fifth, or excuse me, a sixth with Bennett Lester. Damn. I can never seem to win a Defensive Rookie of the Year. That is tough. But I guess let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason. There's nothing for me to do in the meantime. I will upgrade uh, once I show you guys how much XP we have. And I think the team for season number three is going to be exceptional got to sign offensive linemen got to draft linebackers and i think we should be golden so a lot of xp for some of these guys 21k for decoy dockery they changed around my shit so i guess the lineup isn't exactly what it was it's a little bit different defensively though 22xk for keenan lucas um where is bennett lesser he's hidden down here in the depth chart 10k xp for him though nothing crazy for the most part, other than Keenan Lucas with 22K. But I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I will show you guys the upgraded team uh, before we head to the offseason, which I guess we're already there, but before we head to free agency and the draft and things like that. So this is the fully upgraded team and it is nice. David Jones is up to a 98 overall, but look at Anthony Otis at a 92, Decoy Dockery 85. Damn, is the Darius Green starting to go down and overall, I think that kind of sucked. Defensively, though, Jeremiah Tasher's up to an 88. We have Jordan Jenkins at an 80. Jamal Adams up to a 90, but he's playing without confidence. Keenan Lucas up to an 86. Same deal. Bennett Lester at a 77. Gary Conley, 80 overall. Dar uh, Darian Corner? DeAndre Corner at an 83 overall. We had a lot of players approaching 90 overall. Um, with Leonard Williams, with Sheldon Richardson, with Keenan Lucas with a lot of these guys on offense, with John Brown, potentially into Coy Dockery. I mean, we're in a good spot. It's just literally offensive line is so bad. And um, the linebackers aren't amazing or anything. So I can kick Jordan Jenkins inside to play middle linebacker 
pick up another middle linebacker and then a sick pass rusher to play at left outside linebacker, I mean, we're in business. I think the cornerbacks, they're not amazing, but I think they're pretty good. Let's go ahead and advance to the free agent signing period, and hopefully we pick up some really, really good players. Got the cap room to do so. This was fortunate. Zach Martin is a free agent, 99 overall right guard, and uh, yes, Drew Brees is still here, 92 overall. But uh, I think we made the right move with drafting the player that we did. Dwayne Brown is probably going to get signed. Mark Lewinsky for sure. Who else is here? Andy Levitre, why not? <laughs> I mean, like, every good offensive lineman, we need them on the team. That's basically what it boils down to. But we're actually going to go ahead and get Zachary Kubik here. really bothers me the way he spells Zachary. We're going to sign him to a pretty big deal. He's only 25. Uh, just coming in the league for one year. That's 98 total points. I can probably move that down a bit. There's not really a whole point. We have so much cap room to work with. He's young. He's good. He's joining the team. I also obviously want Mark Lewinsky. I can probably trade James Carpenter and get another offensive lineman. So that's probably what I'm going to do with that. But Mark Lewinsky needs to be signed. Let's go ahead and get him on a six-year deal. Play him until he's 33. Um, center. We'll get somebody. Right guard, obviously. Zach Martin. I mean, like... We need him on the team. It's like he's the best offensive guard in football right now, currently, and in the game, I mean he's probably pretty decent. 99 overall, obviously, as you can see right there on the screen. The rest of the offensive line talent is not good. We have Mike Remmers, a revolving door, and we go and pick up left tackle and get Eric Flowers, the other revolving door. These guys are like a hotel lobby. It's terrible. They'd be an awful, uh, awful offensive line, clearly. But. Um, I think those additions are going to help out the team quite a bit, and then all we have to do is trade for some better offensive linemen, and we're golden. All right, so we got Mark Lewinsky, we got Zach Martin, we got Zachary Kubik on the offensive line. Extremely improved. Now all I need is a center and a right tackle, and I think we're going to be golden. That's a sick offensive line if we can do that, and the linebacking core just leaves so much to be desired. Marcus May is not great, but uh, I think the rest is pretty good just all about can we make the moves that we need to make in order to make this a successful franchise and a successful rebuild those are the only questions left on the table so we have the second overall pick in the draft I have really no intention on taking that uh, just the talent in the draft isn't that good so um, I think I'm just gonna use this pick to either trade for a sick middle linebacker or somehow get offensive line I'm not really sure I haven't worked it all out yet all right, with this trade, I'm trading first uh, round pick and a fourth for Quan Alexander from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I feel like he's the linebacker that was best suited for our team at this current state, and uh, I'm very excited to add him to the team. I think I have a second round pick. I do. I'm not going to take this. going to use this to acquire an offensive lineman somehow. Don't know who, but it's going to happen. I know that much. Deion Dawkins, why not? 87 overall right tackle for the Bills. Guess he progressed really nicely. A second and a seventh next year gets it done. I feel like an infomercial guy, but wait, there's more. Cody Whitehair, I'm getting him. A three, a four, and a six next year gets it done. Cody Whitehair is the newest member of the New York Jets. So I think we've really accomplished everything that I needed to in this offseason period. We addressed offensive line. We have really good offensive line now. We addressed linebacking core. We have Quan Alexander. And I wanted a better pass rusher. I do have picks. I have a first and a second. And I could probably trade a wide receiver along with that to get some good uh, pass rusher on the outside, some good edge rusher. It's definitely doable. So I think that's our next step. That's what I'm going to go for. It was so close uh, for Jadavian Clowney. I could not get him. Instead, we got Whitney Merciless, which is, I think, a decent compromise. Uh, for sending Brian Winters a first and a second round pick. So Whitney Merciless becomes a sick edge rusher for us. I think the best one that we have by far. Because, I mean, I mean Jerry Amayatashi is actually pretty good. I think he's up to an 88 overall in this. But you know, Whitney Merciless, he hits that 90 threshold that's so highly uh, sought after. So I think that's going to be the team. I wish I could show you guys, but can't, I guess, right now. All right, here it is. It's It's a good team. This is a really, really good team. Offensive line is incredible, I would say. And then the defense is, at the very least, solid. 
I think it could be better, obviously. There are always improvements you can make. You look at cornerback, you look at strong safety uh, as those improvements that could be made. But other than that, I think this is a team that's definitely going to make the playoffs with team talent-wise. I mean, you can never really count for Madden Simulation. It's kind of just random and whatever. But I like the team. I like where we are. I think it, I think it can, do, can do work. Okay, so that's it's barely English. We're going to simulate. I just want 1850 XP. I just saw that pop up for Coach XP. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into Coach XP to upgrade, I don't know, some position group faster. It's really important that you guys do this if you want more XP. But other than that, I will see you guys at the midseason mark to check in, see how we're doing. So we are 5 and 2. The midseason mark doing quite well. I think what I'm going to do for Anthony Otis is upgrade his traits. Like he has a ton of XP right now, and I don't know what his traits are. Let's get force pass ideal. Let's get throw it away. Um, let's do clutch. Why not? Let's go ahead and do that. We have 5k XP remaining. Let's put that into deep accuracy for now and play action. Why not? He stays at 92 overall. I'm going to use some of this XP on a position group, and I will see you guys uh, for the playoffs. Also, I thought it was noteworthy. We brought back Darren Lee, Jordan Jenkins, Cody Whitehair, and Whitney Merciless. But I don't really plan on doing any scouting at this point at least. Let's go ahead and go to the playoffs, and hopefully we made it for the first time uh, in this particular franchise rebuild. Come on, Jets. Feels bad to say as a Giants fan, but man, I really want to see this team excel in game, at least. So we made the playoffs, 10-6. and six. I'll take it. I think I might do a fourth season after this, actually. Let's go ahead and check out the stats, though, before we get into it. We finished with the same record as the Patriots, yet we took the division. Anthony Otis... Wow, that's way too many interceptions. Why? 4,500 yards, 39 TDs, 19 picks, though. Rushing David Johnson, 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Elijah McGuire, terrible yards per carry, but he did get into the eight, uh, touchdown red zone and end zone. Words, eight times receiving. Decoy Dockery, six season, 101 catches, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns. Ladarius Green almost had 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Allen Robinson, 1,100 yards, five touchdowns. John Brown, eight touchdowns. Blocking, how do we do? A lot of sacks for Zachary Kubik. That's okay. Defensively, Quan Alexander led our team in tackles with 126. Tackles for loss would be 15 from Sheldon Richardson, 14 from DeAndre Corner, 13 from Big Leonard Williams. Quarterback sacks, 13 for Whitney Merciless, 11.5 for Leonard Williams, 10 for Jeremiah Tachi. We're finally getting some pressure on the quarterback uh, with the addition of Whitney Merciless. I'd like to see that. Interceptions, 4 for Quan, 2 for both Keenan Lucas, Bennett Lester, and I guess Justin Burris got two as well. Forced fumbles, I see three from Keenan Lucas. Fumble recoveries, only four as a team. Justin Burris got half of those. Any defensive touchdowns? No. Show me MVP. It goes to Dak. Yo, Anthony Otis at number seven. Sucks. Offense player of the year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Anthony Otis at number five. Defense player of the year goes to Brandon Marshall. Quan Alexander and Whitney Merciless at 9 and 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Nick Eccles. Uh, I didn't take anyone. So Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to JT Yates. All right. First playoff matchup of the video, and it is against the Cincinnati Bengals, who I have no allegiance to, for the record. I'm a Giants fan. 91 overall against 91 overall. Can we do it? Find out next. All right, here we go. Down 10 nothing early, not what I like to see. We do finally get some points on the board of the field goal, but down 16 to three, 16 to nine now going to the half, 22 to nine going to the half rather. Score came back 16 to 22, they score a field goal. Can we come back 19 to 25? 26, 25, 29, 25, hold them off. 29, 31, and that's the game, dude. I should have jumped in, should have jumped in. That's so tough. So we do lose our first playoff game, but as I said, I am going to a season number four and uh, Super Bowl bound next year. I can't guarantee that at all. Never mind. Takoy Dockery has 53k XP, dude. Oh my god, what did you win to get that? I gotta check that out. I guess he made the Pro Bowl, got 32k. I mean, I'll take it. He's coming along quite nicely. Very happy I made that draft choice. Uh, nothing crazy on defense going on. But some crazy XP on offense with Takoy Dockery and Anthony Otis. I will use that XP, but that will be next season. Uh, I don't think I have any picks, so 
this draft is going to kind of be pointless. I'll probably just see what's available in free agency and then start season number four, which will be the final season. And that is, that's got to be a playoff year. Got to be a Super Bowl year. All right, so Keanu Neal is uh, available in free agency. I'm going to sign him. He's an upgrade over Marcus May. At this point, we got to sign him. And he's a 95 overall. He's got to got to come to the team. Also going to sign Anthony Brown. This is definitely the, he got superstar development <laughs> since when we're going to sign him to a huge deal. We need all the help we can get. If this is going to be a Super Bowl year, I mean, we got to go all out, right? All right. So we went ahead, signed Keanu Neal, Anthony Brown, and a fullback Harden here. Upgraded some players. Anthony Otis up to a 99 overall. Decoy Dockery's up to a 94 with confidence, 93 without it. I thought it was a 92 when I upgraded him. I don't know how that changed. And I haven't even touched some of these defensive players yet. And look at Keanu Neal coming with 32 KXP and Anthony Brown with 27. That is insane. We got to get some backup offensive linemen, though. I know they won't play, but uh, I think I think it'd be better just to have some backups at the positions. And I'm going to let the CPU do some upgrading and uh, start the fourth and final season. All right, so this is the final roster. I didn't sign backup defensive linemen yet, but I'll do that. Uh, team looks really good overall bunch of weapons on offense. I mean, this basically what the entire team is, just weapons. I could get a better tight end than Darius Green, though. I think we're fine. Whitney Merciless dropped down in overall as Jeremiah Tachu uh, goes up in overall a little bit. Keanu, or excuse me, Quan Alexander's up to a 90 overall. Darren Lee's our starting middle linebacker, too. Cornerbacks are sick. Look at Keenan Lucas at a 90. Defensive line, solid. I mean, this is the year to get it done. I'm going to just simulate. Actually, let me back up. Defensive lineman. And then I'm going to simulate straight to the playoffs. I think we should make it there. Well, I mean, obviously. Well, that's not obvious, I guess. Anything could happen. That is unbelievable. We went 9-7. and seven. That's so crazy. Like, how did this? How does this team go 9-7? and seven? I'm just going to spend my team XP right now. I'm curious to see what this overall is because, I mean, this is a sick team. And it went 9-7. and seven. We made the playoffs, though, which is really all I care about. And I don't even think I'm going to go into the games. I think I'm just going to simulate from the main screen uh, and apparently we have nobody on the team which I guess could be true if we're going 9 and 7 instead of like you know even 11 12 13 wins is where I expected this team to be talent wise and uh, they just just didn't really get it done got to the playoffs though which is I guess all that counts for the most part but I mean if we can't beat the Chargers yo Chargers are OP and sim I don't know if you guys know that let's check out the stats Anthony Otis still throwing mad interceptions. He had almost 400, or excuse me, 4,800 yards, 43 touchdowns, 16 picks, though, one a game. Rushing David Johnson, David Johnson, David Johnson, David Johnson. Thank you. 30, uh, I can't even speak. 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, receiving at A Rob, AR 15 went off. 1,500 yards on over 100 catches, 12 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns for John Brown. Decoy Dockery kind of slowed down a bit in this season. That's all right. I mean, he's insane. Uh, blocking was pretty good defensively. Quan Alexander led our team in tackles with 128. Tackles for loss, 13 from Sheldon Richardson. Quarterback sacks, 9.5 for DeAndre Corner, 9 for Jeremiah Tashu. This team slowed down a lot on defense. Anthony Brown with five picks. But, I mean, they really did not play well. And that's kind of been um, why this team hasn't done as well as I think we should have as Dak wins MVP again. Anthony Otis at number three. It's just the defense, even though it's good, they just haven't done anything. Anthony Otis at number three for Offensive Player of the Year as well for the AFC. Defensive Player of the Year, no Jets in there. We didn't draft any rookies. There's no point in really checking. But let's go ahead and simulate and hope that we beat the Los Angeles Chargers. Please. Please can we make the divisional? We'll find out in just a minute. Or maybe 5 or 10 at this rate. Ooh, we do. This is the wave. We're not going into the games anymore. 11-5 and five Steelers for the Divisional. Conference Championship. Let's get it. We made it. Yo, 9-7 Jets versus 9-7 Colts. Was this the 2009? No. I feel like the Jets played the Colts in the 2009 Divisional. I know it was Patriots in the Championship. Interesting, whatever. We're going to the Super Bowl. Let's get it. Let's get it. Mark Sanchez even took him to the conference championship, but we have made the Super Bowl. 
against the Atlanta Falcons here. We're going into this one. I need to see the celebration. We're 95 overall against the 96 overall Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl. Let's get it going. Damn, Falcons out here in the all blacks. Well, besides the pants, but those black alternates are insane looking. Can the Jets do it here? Where is this? This is in AT&T. This is in Dallas. Okay. Or, I guess, Arlington. But it is a very close game. 16-12. Now, 16-15 Atlanta. 23-15 Atlanta. Please, can we get back on the board? We do. 21-23. Now, 30-21. About to enter the fourth quarter. Don't let them score. Okay, 24-30. 36-24. 30-36. And that is the game. 36-30 is your final score here as the black and red confetti rains down over the Jets. That's our problem. I mean, quarterback is wearing number six and Mark Dirty Sanchez. I mean, we're never going to win with that number. That was the problem. If I had known that, I mean, we would have won the Super Bowl easy. But uh, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Sorry about like me not being hyped up during it. It's just like my current recording situation, I'm not going to be as excited as I usually am, as loud, as enthusiastic. It kind of is what it is for right now. Things are going to change. But thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. Tell me what team to do next down in the comments section below, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Tack McKinley with one tackle. Player of the game. Super Bowl MVP. Makes sense. Shit, don't